Hey Foogsters, today we're going to whip together an apple crisp that's the perfect fall dish and comes together really quickly. With a lemon. Brett, you know what I love about apple crisp? Uh, how delicious it is? It's not pumpkin spice. <laughs> so I feel like in the fall, everyone loses their mind and it's like pumpkin spice, everything all the time. If it's not pumpkin spice, nobody wants it. That's and right. sometimes I just like don't want it. Like I it's just, yeah. I, oh, it's like too much. It's not my favorite either. So. so I much prefer the smaller fruit of the season, which is apples. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been getting a ton of these from our farmer. So today we were like, we should make a dessert out of it because we have some friends coming over for dinner later. Hopefully it turns out good. We've made this a lot before. So right, sure we got fine. like a whole bushel of apples, so you gotta put them somewhere, right? Yeah, applesauce, canned apples, but today we're just making dessert. Because it's the easiest and most delicious. So some people have like that fancy apple peel machine. I just have like a good old fashioned, like cheap, but this is like the apple or potato peel or whatever you want to call it that everyone should have, but it's, nobody buys. It's like a dollar and lasts like 20 years before it starts getting like rusty. Well, and it's super sharp. It does a good job. I hate those like fancy peelers, like the black ones, because they have the safeguard stop on it. What that really means is they have like the safeguard can't peel anything. <laughs> Once you cube them, you can toss them right into a bowl. So we have about seven apples here um, of varying sizes. Like this guy's kind of a giant. Now you might say, oh, these look a lot smaller than the apples I get at the store, what have you. That's because we get them from like a local farm around here. And I guess in the Midwest, we had like a not as great apple season, or at least here in Illinois. But I don't understand because we've been getting like a hundred apples a week. So if this is like a bad year, I don't even, my brain can't even process what a good year means. Oh, right. What kind of apples are these? I have no idea. Oh, perfect. So the farmer that we get our apples from grows 384 or something varieties. varieties of apples. And so every week we get a different kind that like I've never heard of. You can't find in the grocery store. Unlikely to be able to find them at your local market. But these are... From a flavor profile, they're a little bit sweet and a little bit tart. Like I found that these are like the best kind of mixture. Closest to, I mean, I think like Honeycrisp are a little bit sweet um, in comparison. Yeah. So they're a little bit more, they've got a little bit more on the tart side. Well, I say, we'll say the other nice thing is we actually have a couple different varieties here. Um, I know this one is different than these guys. You can tell by the skins here um, that these two are not the same type of apple right yeah this one's a little more pink and so maybe it's a pink lady <laughs> <laughs> we'll just start making up names and whatever sticks uh but the reason i bring that up is whenever you make like an apple crisp or applesauce it's actually best to use a variety of apples anyway right and you get you're not all kind of like one note in that dish right you get a little bit of mixtures of flavors uh really changes the game up except red delicious never use red delicious for anything that is like the worst. I don't even know why we're still making that apple. So we got all of our peeled, chopped up apples here. Um, that really didn't take too long. So oh, pretty chopping fruit. Pretty Ten easy. At the most, if you have a lot. And then the and secret then, ingredient here, apparently. I don't know. Brett's made apple cobbler, but or apple crisp, but never added. I always add a little lemon. I don't know. I've never. I mean, mine always just tastes like spices and apples. So. It, I think, I don't know what the science is behind it, but I think it is beneficial. I mean, a little bit of acid to help the apples from browning. But then you put them in the oven and they brown because they're covered in cinnamon and stuff. So. We'll see. If you don't like it, you don't have to eat it. I keep it pretty simple with my filling. I just do a little bit of salt, a lot of bit of cinnamon, and a little bit of sugar. Um, so like some recipes tell you for this amount of apples, to use one teaspoon of cinnamon. Sure. I don't understand. So, I, I mean, sure, we don't have the world's most potent cinnamon, but like, even if we did, a teaspoon, it's not even gonna coat the guys. Right. So I always say, this is where I don't follow recipes very well, because I'm like, you just want well-coated cinnamon apples. Right. Yeah, and this is by no means the best cinnamon you can get, and it's probably at the other end of that spectrum. Uh, so, it doesn't hurt to add in a little bit more. All right, let will just be 
Just a little sprinkling of salt, right? Yeah, so we don't have a salt shaker right now. And it's very difficult for me to manage, but someday we'll have one again, I hope. Sorry, this is how people live for millions of years with their salt and their cooking for millions of years. Millions, millions, yeah. Homo sapiens didn't just evolve 35,000 years ago, that's fine. Sorry. Um, and I just do a pinch of sugar. Some people really try to coat them. I don't. I think no. the apples are like plenty sweet. Right. Um, just a little bit of sweetness helps. And it depends on the type of apple that you use in the first place, right? If they're like super tart, maybe you add a little bit more on the sugar side, but we try and not make a whole lot of stuff where we need to like dunk sugar in unless it's like you know, brownies or whatever. Or chocolate peanut butter bars <laughs> that we made on this channel a few That's weeks right. ago and yeah. had quite a bit of sugar in Absolutely. it. Absolutely, you should check those out over here. All right, do you want to sprinkle in the cinnamon and I'll go ahead and sure. do a nice hand mix? All right, one giant tablespoon. Better not. Whoa, better he was going for time. like the cup pouring side. Um, so yeah. I'm just going to sprinkle it until they're like, you know, lightly dusted, a little bit coated. Definitely more than one teaspoon. If I had to guess, I'd say one to two tablespoons. Do you think that's a fair? It's, yeah, somewhere between one and two, one to two tablespoons. Yeah, so really all we want here is for the apples to, to look dirty. Look dirty, right. yeah, basically. Like if you ever made cinnamon sugar toast as a kid, you're basically just trying to make it look like that, right? Mm -hmm. We got one monster dish and then one more tasty dish. All right, so yeah, we're actually making this for friends coming over for dinner. We're not going to force them to do an on-camera taste test because... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Um, so we're going to make a little one that we can sample, and then we're going to make a big one for everybody else to enjoy. And we don't need to like grease these pans or anything beforehand, right? <laughs> right? We probably should have. So definitely grease the pan first. I don't think it's going to matter. The apples produce just a lot of juice, uh, so it will get a little bit syrupy, but I don't think nothing is going to burn to the bottom of the pan the way we cook it. Wow, perfect amount of that, yeah. like we planned it. Should I try one? They're cinnamony. They're pretty sweet. Oh man, that lemon. They're really good. Yeah, and it's a little tart. Thanks for adding the tartness. I think that's really good. Mm -hmm. mm. Alright, so they're good just like this. You don't even need to bake them. That's right. So if you want to stop here, go nuts. Uh, or, you know, the benefits of cooking in the kitchen is you get to sample everything. But stick around. He said you could stop here, you could. This is like... Meh. Like you serve this to somebody, they're gonna be like, "This isn't really anything." So stick with us, and you're gonna have something far better. Yeah. In about We've got more ingredients to go here, still, right? We do. Yeah. yeah. All right. Ha ha! This is a butter knife, Brett. Good job. Any, so, any knife that gets the job done and gets you the butcher's cleaver next time. So all we're gonna do here is mostly oats. You just want to dump a bunch in. Sure. Get a big handful. I mean, it, we're going to want to put a good layer on, so really pack them in Two, there, you know. Three, you know, I'm measuring it. Yep, and then maybe like a half a handful. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. And then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to add some flour. Um, I don't know, just a dusting. You can like just cover the surface in flour. That's all we did there, basically. And then a little bit of sugar because that helps to get it nice and browned and crispy. So this is where we actually add, you know. You add whatever is remaining in the bottom of the bag of sugar you have. That's yeah, nice. so if you have a full bag of sugar, good luck. Um, sorry about your diabetes. But no, maybe that's so like a about, quarter cup. It's about two tablespoons again of sugar. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little bit more than that. It's maybe about a quarter cup because that's three tablespoons. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then can you cut some chunks of butter into like kind of like those pea sized chunks, you know, when you're making like biscuits or whatever? We don't need necessarily all that butter, Brett. Um, now you tell me. <laughs> if you could just start giving me some little like pea sized cubes, maybe out of. I'll give you pea sized those cubes. Really fat. <laughs> fat peas? How big those peas are? Instead of peas, he was going for edamame. So we're just gonna go ahead and mix this up. And kind of similar to making like a pie crust, you kind of just like smush the butter in, I guess, instead of like, you get it coated in, I guess, the flour and the oats and just make it like a nice little blend. You have one of those like sweet little cutter things too that's made for like mixing in the butter, then that would do the job as well. 
I'm not uh, I'm not approving of that. No. That really doesn't, yeah, you can't really do anything else with that thing besides cut. I mean, if you're doing a lot of baking, it's fantastic. There's a lot of butter here. Yeah. It's not the secret to this, lemon and butter lots of butter. Butter makes it better. Yeah. I'm a big believer in butter. It's probably my favorite food. Does vegan butter work the same way here? Yeah, it would. You could use coconut oil if you wanted to. It would be, we've done it with coconut oil before so that our dog can enjoy it because <laughs> she's dairy free. And do you want it soft or do you want it cold when you do this? You want this? it uh, cold. Because this is, this is like room temperature butter we have here. It's fine. You know, the thing about this crisp that we make is we've made it a lot of different times, a lot of different ways, and it always is kind of different, but it's always pretty good. Because you don't want to make it too hard on yourself, right? Otherwise, you're not going to make it. Not, I'm not going to need lotion today. That's right. We'll be like, oh, Angela, what's your skincare routine? Coconut oil? That's pretty trendy. And I'll be like, no, just straight butter. Butter and then go lay in the sun. We're just doing a dusting on here. Yep. Well, like... A little more than that. A little more than, you know, Shake. an eighth of a teaspoon. <laughs> Nobody needs an eighth of a teaspoon. All right. One more. One more there's shaky shake. Oh, kind of, oh, that's kind of a, a lot of oats in there. So. Good shaky shake. All right, so yeah, now we just have this mixture that is like pretty crumbly, has some butter in it. It's well worked in, so it's not just gonna, you kind of press it into the flour and the oats, so it's not just gonna like disappear and sink down. It's gonna stay up in that crisp. And then we're just gonna go ahead and top these. So we just sprinkle it right on. So if you're feeling dangerous, you can like mix it in with it, right? But we're doing more like a topping kind of a deal. Why would you mix it in? Because then some of the oats absorb some of the apple juice as it heats up in the oven. No, so I always like the crispy top. Yeah, it's a little, little different of a dish. You can go either way. The correct dish. I like it the other way. What? Yeah, that's how I made mine the other day and she loved it. Well, do you want me to mix the small one in? No, we're good. Changing his tune, folks. Yeah, we Changing want this one to be crispy. Tune. Extra crispy. 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 So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bake these on 350 for about 45-ish minutes and let them crisp, get nice and crispy. Extra crispy. And then we're going to just dig in, see how it goes. All right, let's go. There we go. Even came out of the oven with ice cream on it, so right? it's pretty good. Look how yummy this is. And it smells super good. It smells yeah. like apple pie. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped. I will say our secret ingredient is this ice cream. It's this <laughs> like homemade brand, but it is the hands down best vanilla ice cream. Just throwing it out there. It comes from Ohio. Not a lot of good things come from Ohio. Am I allowed to say that? Um. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. That's rude. A lot of our Midwest listeners are not happy with Sorry. you. Sorry. So growing up in Michigan, I feel like you're taught to hate Ohio because uh, the whole U of M, Ohio State rivalry. So. That's true. Ohio State. Sorry, guys. But this ice cream came out of it, so that's a good thing. Um, I don't think we have much else to say, Brett. Should we just go in We're just going to dig in. Yeah, I mean, it looks beautiful. It's it, Did it get extra crunchy like you wanted it to? Not really. Ha! Uh, right. Didn't get quite See? as... But, so you'll like it, I guess. Apple's got nice and soft, really juicy. I think the lemon helped the last time you made it. They um, didn't really get the same Mine was still firm, yeah. Mm-hmm. These are, right, they're completely squishable. Like apple pie. Apples. Filling, yeah. But good amount of oats. I like those cinnamon in here. It's not too cinnamony mm -mm. for the recipes that call for way less cinnamon. I think this is really good. All right, I call this a big victory. Mm -hmm. Very easy to make. Most of the time anyway, you either are cutting up apples or you're waiting for it to come out of the oven. Yeah. Right, very easy to make, very quick to whip up for a little party, for your neighbors, for yourself. Uh, and easier than apple pie because you don't have to deal with like the crust. I feel like that scares most people off of making pie. And instead, we just like threw together some oats, some flour, some sugar, and some butter, and boom, right. like you have De a topping. Deconstructed apple pie. There you go. Served with a la mode. Yeah. All right. Well, so definitely would recommend this, especially um, if you want. It, it's fall, right? We all love fall themed things. And if you're like me and you're sick of pumpkin spice taking over, like let's bring back the cinnamon apple trend. That's right. The good stuff, the classic. All right, guys. Leave a comment down below if you're a fan of apples in the fall. Uh, you know, who isn't? Uh, hit that like button if uh, you like dessert with ice cream a la mode. And uh, click subscribe if you want to see more videos that are coming at you like this super easy dessert, very cost effective. 
very, uh, very simple, very delicious. And if you've missed our last few videos, go ahead and click the boxes around here and you can see some of our favorites. Up here, down here. They're somewhere. All right, thanks guys. Bye.